Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome to the southern wing of the Stink Bug Works. Yesterday, I went to the pond and I took uh, the the proof of concept boat and I put some weight on the front of it. I put a, a great big bolt on the front of it and it actually turned. It still went through the wheelie phase, but once the the nose was in the water, it actually turned. Now, unbeknownst to me at the time, the prop got all loaded up with uh, with uh, weeds, and so the last part of the run, it was just kind of doggedly moving around. And it wasn't the fault of the steering or or anything. It was just all clogged up. But I did have some success with that. Now, let's talk about the things that were less successful. As I was heading out to the lake, I was thinking, God, should I take the rescue boat? You know where this is going. Should I take the rescue boat? Should I take the... Ah, no, I got a fishing pole. I'll keep everything in close to shore. Well, I took the little white hydroplane out for a maiden run. And because I had was playing with battery placement and moving things around, I did not have a whole lot of foam, flotation foam, in the model. I had some, but as we will find out, obviously not enough, you know, because I wanted to finalize the battery placement and then I would cut out my foam to fit the batteries. Well, let me tell you, there's a short video of it running. I run it out and away, bring it back, hit full throttle and it just nosedives and goes into submarine mode and you can see it in the video. The water's clear enough. You can see it (laughs) playing submarine for a while and it pops up and rolls inverted. It's almost but not quite in casting range and the wind is at my back and so I'm casting and I'm almost getting it. By the time it takes to reel it in, I'm casting, and now I'm missing it by several feet. Well, long story short, it floats inverted all around the lake for, oh, I don't know, half an hour, 45 minutes or so. And finally, finally, it's blowing close to, what would that be, the eastern shore, So I wander around to the eastern shore with my fishing pole and I cast once and I miss it by a foot or so and I cast again and the line goes right between the back of the sponsons and the rudder. And as I'm reeling it in and the ball is getting closer to it, the whole back end sinks and just the bow is sticking up and I watch as it slowly goes under and disappears from sight. Next time, the little voice in my head says, take the rescue boat, I'm going to listen to that little voice. And whenever I tell people, oh, be sure you put enough foam in because, you know, it it takes more foam to float a brick, I'm going to listen to my own advice. Thank you very much. So (laughs) I'll cut in. I'll show you the video of the two boats running. The um, proof of concept, I may... I may try it again with a little more weight up forward. I took a, geez, what was it? It was like a 5 sixteenths bolt this long and stuck it up there. Next time, I'm just going to move the battery up there and put it on top. As you can see, 
I haven't even touched my workshop. I'm about to discharge the batteries that <laughs> didn't have a run. Oh, 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 to top it off, to top it off. Here we go. Here's the topper. I have a Y connector that's in the Miss Bud, the red boat. And because of the way I put the the batteries in the uh, the white boat, I stole the uh, two to one adapter out of the uh, Miss Bud and put that in the boat that sank. So I couldn't run the Miss Bud because my connector is now at the bottom of the lake. So, <laughs> you know, It's a fun hobby, it's a great hobby, but you can't take it seriously because sometimes Shinola happens. <sighs> so, <laughs> this little thing, I'm working on this. You can see I just, just JB welded some studs into these mounts. My plan is... I'll rough up this side. I'm going to JB weld a carbon fiber plate. Whoosh, carbon fiber plate on both sides. And I'm really tempted to just keep this motor level and go S-bend in a brass tube and forget the lining. That may be my best way. And then just make sure I, I grease the hell out of the cable. And I'll put, I'll use a small enough a small enough tube that this won't have much room to whip around in. This is 2.2 millimeter, so if I used a 3 millimeter inside diameter, 4 millimeter outside, that would be perfect. And then I can just ramp up when it comes to making a little nose cone for this. That shouldn't be a problem. So there you go, status on this. <laughs> Well, remember I said one in, one out? <laughs> okay, here's the running video. Until next time, jet out. Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to take two. If you notice, I've put a very scientific weight on this thing. Let's see if it turns. Well, it turns a little bit. It still does a wheelie. At low speeds, it turns. It's, it's behind there somewhere turning. It's heading for the rock. Well, let's get out from behind this tree. I notice a bunch of, sp that's full left, and I notice a bunch of spray. Oh, I don't have nearly as much left as I do right. Well, the little bit of nose weight seems to have made it somewhat controllable. That's wide open right there, so there's maybe something wrong. Okay, boys and girls, round two. Well, 
not entirely a failure, but <laughs> far from a success. Jet out. Okay, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, round two of the micro shovel. I've adjusted the CG. Whoa! What? <laughs> it went submarine on us. Uh, yeah, it's upside down. Okay, jet out. I'm going to uh, do some casting. <laughs>